Angaka really need to be held more accountable for their actions. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm the average otaku, and today I wanted to talk about the Roroni Kenshin controversy. So, Roroni Kenshin was an extremely popular shonen jump manga created by Nobuhiro Watsuki back in 1994. It's a story set in the samurai era of Japan and has amazing sword fights and great characters. It has a really good mix of action, historical drama, as well as romance. It's considered a shonen classic and very well regarded. It also got an anime adaptation back in 1996 that really boosted its popularity and solidified its spot as one of Shonen Jump's best manga. So what happened that made fans go from loving it to absolutely hating anything to do with it? So back in 2017, it was announced that the mangaka would be continuing Rurouni Kenshin with the Hokkaido arc. A few months later, however, the manga was suspended. That's because in November of 2017, Watsuki was arrested for possession of well. If you don't know what that means, then don't look it up, just know it's really messed up. I mean, I don't even want to explicitly say the name of it because of how disgusting it is. He pleaded guilty to this and confessed to being a... So what was his punishment for such a terrible crime? A fine of 200,000 yen, which is about 2,000 US dollars. Yep, that's all his punishment was. And in half a year, he was back at Shonen Jump continuing to work on his manga. The editorial department even went as far as to defending, saying that he spends his days filled with remorse. They act like it was nothing that serious. In fact, since the arrest, two Roroni Kenshin films were announced as well as a new anime adaptation. Of course there's a lot of outrage and backlash, but most of it falls on deaf ears, especially because most of the people complaining live in the West and outside of Japan. I'm honestly disappointed in both the publishers and the Japanese legal system for how the situation was handled. This whole situation really highlights some flaws in Japanese society and as well as their legal system. And that's not to say that a flawed legal system is something specific to Japan. I mean, I live in the US and I can admit that there's quite a few flaws in our legal system here as well. It's kind of just disappointing to see a country like Japan that's supposed to be so technologically advanced and forward thinking taking something like so lightly. I honestly think this is one of the worst crimes and seeing the punishment just be a small fine is really disappointing. This is similar to the act age controversy I talked about, where I just really think there are no excuses for the mangaka's actions, and they really need to be held accountable. It's interesting to see how act age was cancelled while Roroni Kenshin keeps on getting published. And honestly, that's just the sad reality of the main interests of corporations. Act age was a much smaller manga when it got cancelled, while Roroni Kenshin is much bigger and there's a lot of potential money that could be lost by cancelling it. Shonen Jump seems to be willing to overlook these crimes if it means they can make money. And like I've said before, I don't think being popular or famous should get in the way of you being accountable for your own actions. He shouldn't be able to continue to make manga despite his actions just because he's popular. He should have lost that privilege. And of course there's always that question of do you separate the art from the artist? I honestly think that's a pretty loaded question, and I really think that's just up for you to determine for yourself. For someone like me who's never read or watched it, it's really easy for me to just say, oh yeah, you should definitely avoid it. But what if you grew up watching it and it's one of your favorites? The manga itself doesn't have any themes that have to do with what the mangaka did and their characters are pretty morally strong. Is it really fair to tell someone they shouldn't read it? I think it's a lot more complicated than that. Like, I don't think you're a bad person if you continue to reread and rewatch it. In fact, I think it's completely fine to do that. Honestly, the main problem I have is with the new anime and movies coming out. I really don't like the precedent that it sets. There are really no consequences for the mangaka's actions, and it shows that publishers will prioritize profits over everything else. Overall, I just find this to be a sad reminder of the somewhat dark side of the manga industry. Well, that's pretty much it for my video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think about this controversy in the comments, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you and bye.